what he had done was he went openly and then had taken too many shots, so he was already, you know, mortally wounded and he had died then. And everyone there had died except for one, Marcus Luttrell, he's a lone survival, survivor from the book, Book Survivor. We have a tribute to him here as well, so as we walk around you can see more about him as well. Um, he is the one that survived of the four. Also, the Army came in, the Night Stalkers, and other members that were a part of the SEAL team that actually were in Afghanistan at that time with Michael Murphy did try to come and provide backup support, and they were also under attack, and all of those men perished. And Marcus Luttrell was there, a lot of people were there that, that you know, knew Michael, and or Red Wing family members. This was the uniform I was talking about. This was as he last wore it, including all the ribbons, you know, of course, minus the Medal of Honor, because he received that after he was deceased. In, um, out to a distance of 12 nautical miles, which is basically out to the horizon with an accuracy of 5 feet. Uh, down below, there's a drum that holds 20 rounds. You can fire about 20 rounds in less than a minute. And then, uh, there's a bunch of magazines down there where the can continue to load and fire as we need to. So overall, pretty effective equipment that made for a small boat engagement in order to also do short boat work. Well, usually a ship like this deploys with you know a small arc, right? You'll have a carrier, an amphib base, you'll have a destroyer, which is us. You'll have several variety of ships, and everyone has their primary purpose, right? Like their command and control, for example, is the carrier. They're the ones that feed you all the resources. But us would be primary weapon systems. So where best you go? Yes, that's what we do. So when you leave here, are you making any stops? You said your where's your last stop? Your, uh, Our home base? port yeah. is Pearl Harbor, where the ship. They set, you know, to make sure we have electricity, set up potable water, so sewage. I mean, they do that. These are young people, men and women, that, that do this stuff every day. It's pretty remarkable. Same with um, our Hilo deck. Those guys that run the, the Hilo operations. These 17, 18 year old kids doing amazing things, things that most adults don't get we to do. Think we've been, we just came from Maine, so most of our family is in Hawaii or elsewhere, and we've been in training for, like I've been in training a year now. I got here July of last year and I haven't seen my family. So that's how we do it. You know, we have, there's so many new stuff on board that though I'm familiar with it, it's different and upgraded equipment. I don't know how to operate it, so. so you don't have any idea where you're next going to be deployed? Like our, our future missions? No, we don't know yet. There's, there's almost it's, no way of knowing. There's no right way now. until, and we still have a lot of work to do. Um, it's a brand new ship, and we go back to Hawaii, and we pretty much everything gets upgraded and fine tuned. Yeah. And, and there's any stuff that we've been missing or whatever. Yeah, there's we still gotta update some update stuff. Update equipment. We're missing, you know, some things that we need upgraded. So that's when we do all that when we get to Hawaii. Got like so. a certain shipyard period. Yeah. So. So we can get stuff that we figured out that we don't have or something yeah, we need. That's the whole purpose of this maiden voyage too. Is to really pull our gear to the max, we push all of our gear to the limit. 